Straight through. Copy. Roger. I'm Randy Popst. I'm a professional race car driver with a 30-year career driving for factories like Porsche, Audi, Mazda, and Volvo. I've won almost 100 pro races, and I've always been fascinated with the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. This is the 10th time I've done it, and it's fast and adventurous and changing. You never know what's gonna happen. So I come back up to the mountain anytime I can. I have always loved cars, and that turned into a love of driving through corners. And here at Pikes Peak, the challenge is greater than any other race on earth. The danger, the changing pavement, the narrow confines of this little mountain road. And we're racing up full speed in 600, 700 horsepower cars. It's a thrill that I can't find anywhere else. I'm addicted to the adrenaline and the feeling of going as fast as I can on a tiny mountain road to 14,000 feet. The competition is, in fact, a crazy challenge. That's why I want to do it even more. Guess what? Anyone who wants to race at Pikes Peak is a little bit crazy. And they love adventure. <laughs> Many things make Pikes Peak difficult. One of them is, it's illustrated by the saying, when you come to Pikes Peak, you're not racing the other racers. You're racing the mountain. The mountain is very, very high. This makes it hard to tune the engines and the brakes and make them work. At that kind of altitude, cars don't drive on roads this high. This is one of the only ones in the world, certainly in North America. The weather also makes the pavement bad. The pavement buckles when it freezes in the winter because at 14,000 feet, there's freezing and snow all year on certain days. So in the top section, it can be very, very rough. And next, the race is just, it's kind of wild because it's not like a racetrack with walls and guardrails and safety barriers. There's not much. You as the driver, it's up to you to keep the car on the road. And it's difficult because that road is 12 and a half miles long, it's going steeply up, and there's 160 corners. Very hard to memorize. Took me three years, at least. Over the years, I've been watching Pike Speak. My first entry was in 1995, and I remember Rob Millen, a hero. Actually, I raced with Rod Millen in the North American Touring Car Championship. He ran a Hyundai Scoop back in 1992, which was kind of the first sporty Hyundai that I remember in the early days after the XL. And then later on, his son, Reese Millen, I remember running in the uh, 2000s, I think, or, fit, or in the teens, in both a, uh, let's see, it was a Genesis Coupe and doing really well. So I've seen the history, and kind of like the history of Hyundai cars in the United States, start out small, and get better and better and better. Well, quite honestly, I wanted to drive one. I've been to Pikes Peak, and I've seen Hyundai's efforts at Pikes Peak before, and it's always, the, well, I wanted to way back up that mountain. The team I was running with wasn't run, gonna be coming back because they couldn't find a way to advance their EV, and the big problem they had actually was the battery derating quickly when it got hot. So I thought that it was a wonderful opportunity for Hyundai and I, I was uh, wishing that maybe I could be part of it. Okay, so because I was not here in time to qualify, I am the first car to go up the road. The bad part about that is it's dirty and dusty, it's a mountain road, the grip's not quite as good, and it's cold, it's early in the morning. But, hey, I had a great time. I love driving cars fast. The TA spec Ionic 5N had a lot of downforce from the splitter and wing. Here's my goals. Three. One, and most important, get to the summit. Get up the mountain. Two, 
Get in under 10 minutes, because that's my best time in the other EV cars. Three, I thought maybe I could pull a 940 or even faster if I had a really good run and got it all right. For the run, we accomplished a goal. We got up to the top. Goal number two, I ran a nine minute, 55 second run, accomplished that. Goal number three, 940, no, we didn't get there, but I'm proud of what we accomplished with a great team, with a car that I've only driven for a few minutes. 930. <laughs> What's the significance of the result here at Pikes Peak Highway today? The Ionic 5N has been developed better than any other electric car that I've driven yet in terms of its brake cooling and its power and its performance. N means something and Pikes Peak International Hill Climb is a great place to demonstrate it and take care of its potential performance. Thanks, Tim and Matt, two engineers that are part of the whole Hyundai Motorsports team, along with Brian Hurd of Autosport, and we've got some ideas here on how they took a streetcar and turned it into a winning, record-setting race car here at Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. Tim, but why are these aero parts so huge? Can you tell me why as a Pikes Peak expert? I mean, a four-time winner with another car team. Absolutely. So uh, up here, we're at the start line now, and we're at about 11,000 feet, and we climb all the way to 14,000-odd feet. Um, so the air density up here is not what you have at sea level. So to make the same amount of downforce that you'd want on a, on a uh, car down at sea level, you need to make everything way bigger so you can take advantage of the air density up here. I see. Excellent. I've been racing EVs up on the mountain here for several years, and my car and the other ones I hear usually have a loud siren noise. Yeah. It's required to have a loud noise by the rules, yeah. but this Hyundai race car is not like that. Yeah. What, what were you thinking? What, what led to it, and what did you use? So, like you, I've experienced the EVs here with the loud sirens and they're always ear piercing and so annoying. And so I wanted to avoid that. Like, is there a way that we can do something else? And um, when the Ionic 5s and showed up, they had uh, the ice engine sounds that they already developed are already in the, the production vehicles, but we wanted to use that. And so working with Hyundai, we were able to amplify that sound, bring it all the way up to 120 decibels to meet that rule. And uh, now we're uh, promoting the brand as well as staying safe for the spectators, the wildlife and everything else can hear the car coming. Beautiful integration. <laughs> now, I've driven several EVs and they all got their batteries hot right away when they were being driven fast on the racetrack. What are the challenges when it comes to managing, uh, what do you call it, thermal management? Yeah. yeah, when you take care of battery temperatures, what are the challenges? So the challenges are that we are taking a significant amount of energy and we're trying to remove that from the battery very quickly. And as we try and move it, remove it very, very quickly, we create a lot of heat. And so we have to take care of that heat in a simple, fast way in order to make sure that we can go as fast as possible. Because as soon as we start to heat that battery up too much, then we're not gonna be able to use it to its full capacity. If that battery's too cold, we're not able to use it to its full capacity. So the simple answer is not just make it as cold as possible. The, the answer is that there is a happy medium that uh, the battery starts at a cooler temperature in order to finish at a cooler temperature. So uh, the main development strategies that we had to work on for this vehicle was we knew how long it was gonna take us to get up the mountain. We knew how long we had to manage that heat. And and so we would uh, do what we call preconditioning for the battery and for the motors uh, to get them to that perfect optimal temperature where we could still have the maximum amount of energy coming out and so that we could start at that cool temperature and still have the maximum amount of energy at the top. And uh, it was perfect uh, for what we needed to do. We were able to find that sweet spot to be able to have maximum energy the entire time. I have to agree, Matt. In the cars that I've raced before, EV, they get hot almost immediately. Three minutes on one, and certainly within five minutes. And in the Ionic 5N, it was flat out all the way up that mountain. I am so grateful to Hyundai, Hyundai Motorsports, and the Brian Herta Autosport team 
for giving me a chance to become part of the Hyundai racing team here at the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb today and to trust me with their car to just get in it and go race it.